Good evening, guys. Uh, this is my evening video. Uh, I'm not going to do a morning video. So bottom line is what we did on SPY, we came down to the 200-day moving average on SPY, getting a little bit, uh, uh, just a little bit of a bounce. We're off that uh, this evening. And so I do want to point that out going into tomorrow's session. We also came into our uh, signal line. Above the signal line is bullish. Below it is bearish with a bearish cloud below us, okay, here on and a downtrending cloud also on the daily time frame on spy but we did manage to hold still hold above the cloud we didn't break down into it so that is a relatively uh uh by the dip scenario typically but we'll see what happens the red cloud though that is ominous of what's going on here then also uh so we have a red cloud now forming a red a red selling cloud here on our uh Bollinger Bands, and then I'm going to enlarge this because I got all kinds of stuff on here. So we do have a channel right here, okay? We tested, we came right down and tested that, and initially right now we are bouncing off that right here, right now. So so there's a lot of reason to think that there's multiple things that we ran into for support, you know, for the overnight session. So in my opinion, we're not going to see a big washout now because there's so many different things that's potentially supporting us here. So, uh, but that doesn't mean we're not going to break down tomorrow. So heads up on that. Okay. So today's session really started off with really bad data out of China and a, all the Asian markets sold off. Okay. Then, then Europe followed suit. Okay. And, uh, so China's trying to manage the crisis because they have limited resources to, for too many people getting too many sick too many times. Well, you know what happened back in December, Biden coming out saying, we're well equipped to handle the outbreak crisis. And I'm telling you right here, right now, that it was not the case. Because I know firsthand from my personal experience, my brother had gotten pre-approved from his doctor to get, there was a medicine they were giving for people with early symptoms. And he was supposed to be able to walk right in there and get that medicine. And doctor said, no problem, you will have it. And he made sure he had this, okay? Because he had started a new job and he couldn't take the chance of getting sick and missing work. Because, uh, you know, he had bills, mortgages, all kinds of bills to pay. He didn't want to take the chance of losing his job. So over Christmas break, his plan was to get the shot. Now, I argued with him about this over Thanksgiving. Well, he didn't listen. And, well, guess what? He ended up dying in January, Jan uh, January 3rd because, uh, from COVID over all this because he and i'm telling you it was i was in the hospital wards i saw the triage of medicine they were doing saw it firsthand so i'm telling you i saw them wheeling people out to hospice taking sending people home with full-blown covid so they wouldn't have to count them as covid victims so i'm telling you that that's exactly what was going on okay and uh so uh the current administration is sure not getting my vote because uh, you know, I've lost uh, my best friend in life. So, okay. So we have not quite tagged that 200-day moving average yet. So that's why I think we're going lower tomorrow on the queues, on the daily. So we have not actually tagged that 200 on the queues. Keep that in mind. So that's why I do think we're going lower. And then the Ichimoku on down here, it's even worse. We, instead of coming down to the Ichimoku, we came to the top of the cloud and uh, we found a rejection at the top of the cloud. Okay, so we're still above our signal line, but I, so I'm actually early on tomorrow. And that this in this case right here, this scenario right here, I think we could have a gap down in the overnight session based on tech into this signal line and into the 200 day moving average. Okay, that is a, a big uh, scenario that I do want to float out there. If you uh, let me go down here on this one, and so bottom line is, uh, so we've been in an accelerated uptrend, okay, and we came down, we back tested, we're on the fifty percent uh, midline of the current downtrending channel we're in, okay. So it looks like to me that we're going to be break, uh, breaking lower, in my opinion. Our new quarter pivot is three sixty seventy six. That's going to line up fairly close to that 200 day moving average and that uh signal line for ichimoku so all those are lining up suggesting you know a little bit more downside here and we're going to start coming we might be might be coming into some some sort of support 
They could do this after hours, you know, but I do think it's going to be something that's going to be done in a cash session. So keep that in mind going forward here in your trading. Okay. So bottom line is uh, what we what we seen starting uh, Wednesday, and so this one here is going to probably come into the new uh, uh, quarterly pivot starting tomorrow, the first day of the quarter. IWM crashed and burned yesterday. Started crashing and burned yesterday, and it came down into that quarterly pivot yesterday, and now today we rejected it further. Okay, so we are actually trading. It's leading to the downside on a technical basis going forward here. The banks really got hit today. Okay, guys. So heads up on that. So we did close below that quarterly pivot and slightly below the weekly pivot. So so uh, keep that in mind here. Uh, I do think this is another one going to be coming down. See this channel area right here? I do think there's a chance that uh, we're going to be initially coming down the 204.40 area here in the open tomorrow. So that's another one I think is going to be red in the morning, possibly red in the morning and stuff. And uh, we do have a monthly pivot at 203. Okay, if we take that out, then, you know, it's going to be possibly a, a quite a quick move all the way down to 200 here. So keep that in the back of your mind as well. So uh, 203, possibly all the way down to 200, maybe even as early as tomorrow. So uh, just keep that in the back of your mind for those scenarios. Don't get me wrong, there's always the upside scenario too. So just keep those scenarios in the back of your mind. Okay, so uh, some things that happened today. I do want to point out AMD got roasted. The volumes were off the chart on AMD this morning. Uh, some major things that hit the tape this morning. There was a downgrade in Dell computers, downgrade in HP. Anytime you see some major downgrades in Dell and HP, horrible. it's going to be a horrible day on semis. Nine times out of ten. And I was talking about it pre-market. I was actually looking at the uh, 110 puts uh, that expire tomorrow. I was looking at the pre-market. And uh, the idea... I just couldn't get myself to give uh, 20. Well, at the time, pre market, they were they were like, uh, I don't know, five or about 10, 15 cents or something like that, like 10 cents a contract. And those things just, I mean, they were just on fire. Uh, those, uh, and they just, it, it was amazing how, how much a percent, it was a, like 1,740% return uh, from yes, uh, yesterday's close on those, uh, those single options on AMD. But the volumes were so light too, it was hard to uh, anticipate a move of that magnitude. Uh, early on in the morning, I mean, the first minute you only had 300 some contracts so traded. It wasn't like, it wasn't giving you a sign that it was just going to go off the rails early in the morning, you know. So, uh, yeah, that's something to think about. It wouldn't even hit my screeners. That's, if you didn't, if I literally didn't have it up on my screen, I wouldn't even realize what was going on. Uh, so, I just wanted to say that. But yeah, there was a lot of blood in the markets today, uh, everywhere here. And as far as percentage returns go, give me a second here. So some of the big returns, uh, this is based on my scanner. <clears throat> so uh, I, I'm actually looking for some uh, fairly good volume on some of the options here and stuff. And some things more closer to the, uh, at the money for the scan and stuff. So. In my opinion, uh, some of the biggest move, uh, gainers today was uh, like Target. The uh, 220 puts on Target were re paid really good here, 557 put, uh, uh, 557 percent. Uh, AT&T was a real big winner today. Taiwan Semiconductor was a big winner today. Another semiconductor. XLF was getting hit hard today, really hard. And when when you see XLF selling off. You got to stand up and pay attention. And uh, there, there was some damage happening with our XLF today. So be aware of that. Uh, let, me, let me chart that real quick. So my main takeaway here, we broke the 200 on the XLF to the downside. Very ugly chart pattern. Okay. We broke the cloud on the daily time frame. Very ugly pattern. We broke our signal line. Okay. So now we have to think we're going to be coming down to 37.77 at the earliest. And ideally, what happens here, you see how every time we break down in this zone, we come down to the $37. I mean, just I mean, just every time we break into it, you know, it may not do it initially, but every time we come down in here, eventually it does come down here. OK, so we, we've had other times that we've come down and we bounce back up and that might be the case tomorrow. But ultimately now, you know, you have to look that we're going to $37 at the very least. Okay, so be aware of that going forward in your trading. 
So another thing that's hitting the markets that we haven't been paying attention to, uh, many of these smaller Chinese names. Now, don't get me wrong. The China had its own problems driving the names down on top of it. But the news came out over the week or, or uh, overnight also that Baidu uh, was not wanting to reduce the uh, financial statements for 2021 that the SEC is now requiring. So we have new disclosure requirements out of the SEC for Chinese Internet companies. So now we're putting Baidu on the table as potentially being delisted from U.S. stock exchanges if they don't do it. So if a company as big as Baidu is doing that, you've got this Yen, this Yeti, this, uh, you know, bunch of these uh, smaller uh, China, uh, uh, China, China stocks, ADRs. You know, and they're not going to be able to reproduce data, you know, uh, for U.S. regulators, you know, you know, in hindsight, you know, or not willing to. So a bunch of these uh, Chinese names are in on the verge of being de delisted. So be aware of that situation going forward. And I do want to point out also the information the SEC is requiring is not information they make. They create for their own financial statements for mainland China. So I do want to point that out. They're having to recreate information that, that currently does, in many cases, doesn't exist. Uh, another one I want to float out there, that's your XLY. Uh, these lines here, try to ignore them. I didn't go through and make sure they were correct. Uh, but at any rate, uh, so uh, what I've got going on here, we're still above the 200 on that one, but we had a hard rejection here on the uh it should move the cloud on the daily here so i do all the way down to the signal line so i do want to point that out going into tomorrow's session that's that's another one that is uh giving us a danger signal another one is your xlc that's your telecommunications uh spider etf rejecting the cloud it came up into the cloud we rejected it over here now we're rejecting it again and we're right into that signal line again so a bunch of these critical uh, uh, sectors are all uh, coming into these signal lines for a potential rollover back to lows here. So I do want to float out that we, we came into some major uh, tr possible trouble to start a new quarter. Just heads up on that. And this is the backbone of your semiconductors. Look what's happened here on the daily time frame. Bearish Ichimoku, we, we just obliterated outside we, we actually closed outside at the cloud okay below our signal line really this is the ugliest of them all i called it out pre-market i tell you it was horrible we broke below our new uh, quarterly pivot okay so we rejected our new quarterly pivot starting tomorrow we broke we broke below our weekly pivot for this week and we're barely holding on to our, uh, 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 well, it will be, as of tomorrow, it will be our la monthly pivot from last month. Our new monthly pivot will be down at 263. So really ugly stuff happening SMH here. Heads up on that in IYT. So this is a bearish signal here for our transports. So heads up on that. So one final thought that I want to point out here, guys. So bottom line is, we crossed, we did away with our quarterly pivot, our, 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 our quarterly pivot and our monthly pivots. So as of tomorrow, we we have thrown switches now, okay, in the market. And the way I like to think of the market is a dashboard on a vehicle with multiple uh, gear shifts, okay? And one of those primary gear shifts, okay, is when we rotate from a quarterly situation into a new new quarterly situation okay because that that impacts two long-term trends that's impacting your quarterly trends and your monthly trends all at the same time and what we're doing here we're downshifting we're coming out of you know uh, a, a uber bullish you know a, you know all, all say okay market we're, we're downshifting a gear in this market as of tomorrow when we come in here so that's what I'm thinking about and you have multiple gear shifts on the, on this dashboard and you know uh and different things elements that hit the market the algos read them differently and with us changing gears like i said uh like like we're doing tomorrow this is a major drag this, this is like this is like uh 
the primary master gear, okay? This is one of our primary master gears. So, so basically, what you're going to start seeing, in my opinion, is less uh, less positive news to good news, okay? And far more uh, 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 red days, even on good news, okay, going forward here. And we avoided this situation the last time this has happened when it was whenever the whole uh, COVID completely broke out. And we had a similar situation then, but they put untold stimulus into the market. Uh, unlike ever, this is global stimulus, okay? We got liquidity out the yin yang around the planet, okay? And th th it saved it it, it. it saved the whole market. The whole market was ready, com completely collapsed, and it was ready for a just a normal technical correction. I mean that that was the problem, you know. COVID hit right whenever the market was due for a major pullback, okay, on its own, and and then they put all this stimulus out there to make sure it didn't do it. Well, now we're back in that same situation, but this time they're taking the money away, so we're setting up for a major. Uh, a potential uh, a major, major problem here in the market. So heads up on that. Like I said, going into the midterm elections, I still think SPY is going to 340. So heads up on that going forward. Please like my video if, if you like it. Uh, leave comments below. Uh, if you're seeing stuff that I'm not seeing, please post it in the comments there so I can, you know, investigate it and stuff. And, you know, uh, please retweet me on Twitter if you can. Okay. So this is a little bit longer than what I've been doing here lately. I apologize. Thanks a lot for watching.